Okay, so I'm now starting the recording. I minimize your images. Uh, and we start with the, the workshop, Games and Creative Tasks in the Language Classroom. And by classroom, we mean the real classroom, but also the, the virtual classroom that we're experiencing these days. Um, so the first thing I want us to do is the rose and the thorn. I would like you to talk to me about it, but since I cannot hear you, what I want you to do is in the chat, write something positive and something negative that has happened to you this last week. So your rose and your thorn. And you write in the chat, one good thing that happened to you and one negative ha thing that happened to you this last week. And I might start with it actually. So my rose is and my thorn is <laughs> there is Pina. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> okay, Vasil is spending more time with my family. More than ever before, Costandina. Okay, you have connected with people. Irini, Maria, it doesn't go Rose, in I completed a, new, a few forgotten course webinars, Coursera webinars. Rose, spending time at home. From Despina, Kelly, I had the time to contact friends living abroad. Yeah. Limitra free time is a rose. I'm at a loss with technology, Costandina. Okay. Thorn from Vaso. I got a severe backache because of working on PC too many hours. That's another thing. Uh, Lydia, uh, if you look on your screen, we, we are writing in the chat a rose and a thorn. This means something positive that happened last week and something negative. Uh, Georgia, I started teaching my pre-junior course and it works. Yes, we did the same and it's perfect. Uh, Georgia, Rose, can't think of anything to go with it. Actually, Thor, terrible backache. Okay, you're, you're going through a difficult time, Georgia, we can tell. Uh, Vili, my Rose is that I have found the time to start some online courses. My thorn is that I'm afraid that I will gain some weight during the quarantine. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Irini, my thorn, I got upset over truly nothing and my boyfriend was okay with it. Also a rose, I guess. Irini, exactly the same here. Um, I was telling off Costantinos for no reason. Yep. Thank, thank God he's patient. Let's wait for the others to see. Anybody else who would like to share their thorns and the roses? Okay. Um, so another thing I would like you, ah, there is one more answer. Let's see from Lydia. Lydia has lost weight. Oh my God. How did you do that? Oh, you need to, this is a good webinar for us. I don't care about games and creative tasks and, and teaching. Show us the way. <laughs> Thorn, I still can't teach in real classes. Of course, that's a thorn for all of us. I do miss my, my real students, my physical students terribly. Uh, and now the other thing I want you to do is I want you to draw three circles on a piece of paper, make it like an A4 if possible. We've got one more answer in the chat, Rose. Uh, following a specialist diet, says Lydia. Not feeling hungry at all. Okay, Lydia, uh, please email me about it. I'm sending you my email here. This is important information. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Now, I want you to draw three circles on a piece of paper. In the first circle, I want you to write a number that is significant for you. In the second circle, I mean, it might be your birthday, it might be your lucky number, whatever. In the second circle, I want you to write a concept in your life that is significant for you. 
so like an abstract idea. And uh, in the third circle, I want you to write the initial of a person who is uh, important to you. So in my case, the number is 11 because it's my lucky number since I was a child. What is significant for me is stories because I live through them and I, I, and I care about them. And the, the third circle, the initial is K. It's the, the initial of my partner, Costandino, so he's very important to me. So I want you to do the same, to draw three circles. I'm going to give you um, two minutes uh, to complete this, and then I will put you in breakout rooms so you can present them to each other. Okay, so draw the three circles, please, on paper. I want you to show it to each other. So the first one is a number that is significant for you, your lucky number, your birthday number, uh, 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 I don't know, something that you, all, you always, always mean something to you. Second, an abstract idea of something that is significant in your lives. And third, the initial of a person that is important to you. Well, we have one more person who just joined us. Okay, uh, you have one more minute to finish your task and then I will put you in breakout room so you can start talking about it and presenting your circles of life to each other. And now I will start my breakout rooms. So I will have uh, four rooms, three persons in each room. You need to unmute yourselves. Uh, and you go to your breakout rooms, you click on join and in a minute, and you uh, present your circles of life to each other. So in a minute, you will see in a second actually, your breakout rooms and you need to join them. Kelly, you have to go to your breakout room. All right. <laughs> Lydia, you have to go to your breakout room. Valentinos and Lydia, you have to go to your breakout rooms. Ah, you are already in your breakout room, sorry. No, you're not. Oh, yes, you are.
Good morning. So now I'm gonna have you back. Okay, good morning. Okay. If you discussed and presented to this, if it worked, okay? So you, you did share. Uh, I'm waiting for everybody to come back. Yes, everybody's back. Good. Um, and we go on with our... Okay. Uh, the next activity I want us to do is called Trip to the Moon. So I want you to imagine that I'm the captain of a spaceship and I'm going on a trip to the moon. And I want to take you with me. So I want you, normally we would do that um, orally, but because I cannot hear you, we can do it again on the chat. I want you to use this phrase, hi, my name is, and you write your name, and I'm going to bring a, an or some. So you use this phrase exactly as it is, and you say one thing you will bring to the moon if I take, and then I'll tell you if I'll take you with me or not. So you write, hi, my name is Maria, for example, and I'm going to bring a book. Okay, whatever you want, a marshmallow. <coughs> um, so take the sentence and write it in the chat. Okay, okay. Um. Sorry, I'm going to the previous slide. Ah, uh -huh. sorry. Um. So we've got, hi, my name, hi, my name is Kelly and I'm going to bring some chocolate. Kelly, I cannot take you with me. Uh, hi, Amy. Uh, hi. hi, I'm Lydia and I'm going to bring my cat to the moon. Lydia, I cannot take you with me. Hi, my name is Willie and I'm going to bring my dog. Willie, you stay on earth. Hi, my name is Despin and I'm gonna bring some flowers. No, I'm Georgia and I'm taking a piano even though I cannot play. Georgia, you have to stay on earth as well. 
Hi, my name is Vaso and I'm going to bring some chocolate. Vaso, I love chocolate, but I cannot take you with me. Hi, my name is Amy and I'm going to bring an astronaut costume. No, Amy, you stay on Earth. Oh, no. My name is Mari Sophie and I'm going to bring some chocolate. No, my name is Irini and I'm going to bring hand gel sanitizer with me. Kidding, I'm going to bring my favorite books with me. Unfortunately, no one can join me. But there is a reason. Okay. Um, so I will say, yes, Vili, do you want to write it? Do you want to write the right one? Yes. <laughs> okay, so then I so then I'm try. So, hi, my name is Vili, and I'm going to bring a, an, or some, what? Write it. Maria, sorry, I was kicked out of the program. Uh, Let's see I if missed... I can take Vili with me. She cannot hear you. She cannot hear you. Yeah. Okay. Write in the I'll chat. I'll give you an example for myself and see if you can get it. Hi, my name is Maria, and I'm going to bring some marmalade with me. Ah, ah okay. so now write just the thing you're going to bring ah uh, and or some so i i said okay Vili will bring a video camera correct let's see the others kelly will bring a kite so i can take her with me kelly kite did you get it maria yes Vili, Vili, um, video camera kelly kite so oh god something. Uh, georgia no you have to find something, Georgia. My name is Irini and I'm going to bring some eggs. Yes, Irini, you and your eggs can join us. Uh, my name is Mary Sophie and I'm going to bring a map. Of course, Mary Sophie, we need a map on the moon. Georgia, you need to bring something else. Vaso is going to bring a vet. Ooh, <laughs> a, a, a cute vet, we hope. Uh, Amy is going to bring an emerald. Vespina is going to bring a desk. Yes, let's teach on the moon. Good. Um, I'm still waiting for Georgia to bring a gift. A giraffe. Wow, we have a vet for your giraffe, Georgia, on the moon. Excellent. Uh, Costadina, what do you want? Oh, you, Costadina, what are you going to bring? You can bring a, uh, it's not Costadina, it's Despina. No, it's Costadina. No. Um, she's, she's bringing a koala. What? It's, <laughs> this moon is like a zoo. <laughs> uh, and Lydia, what about you? What are you going to bring? Could you bring some love on the moon, Lydia? Oh, we nice. need some love. So, um, what happens here is that this is. Can you see my screen again? No. Oh. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I can see that. Okay, uh, this is really a grammar exercise that you can play with your students as a game, both uh, in real life and virtually. And it's to practice count, non-count nouns. Uh, uh, some, we said some love, uh, some marmalade, a kite, a giraffe, a vet. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm gonna put you, no, I'm not gonna put you in breakout rooms. Uh, I will just read the sentences and show me with your Thumb. hands with your thumbs if you agree or disagree with these statements when my students play i feel we might might be wasting time do you agree or disagree with this statement i don't have time to play with my students as there's so much to cover Agree or disagree? Disagree. <laughs> okay. Playing in class might lead to classroom management issues. Agree or disagree? Parents complain if we play in class. Well, sometimes I agree with that as well. <clears throat> And it's better to keep the games for the end of the lesson. Agree or disagree? Now, let me give you some tips here. Uh, in the past, all theory was that, uh, okay, that we need to keep the, the, Maria, we cannot hear you. Yeah, we can't listen. 
No. No. Unmute. You're right. I turned off. Okay. Yeah. Again, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yep. Good. Okay. No, no, I'll share I'm my screen. <clears throat> so, it was this slide. Okay. So, we said when my students play, um, you could see these things, I think. So, these are the statements we were discussing. Uh, I, I'm going to give you um, a tip here. Don't do the games at the end of the lesson, especially for real life teaching. The games should be done uh, somewhere in the middle when the attention span goes down and the energy goes up. Uh, as you know, the maximum of time adults can concentrate in a task, the maximum is 40 minutes. So for children, uh, every seven to 10 minutes, they need what we call uh, a mental break. So you either incorporate uh, short, brief, fun tasks throughout your lesson, games and creative activities, or you, um, you, you break out your lesson in like the, after the first 30 minutes, a game that takes 10 minutes, for example, seven minutes, and then you go on with whatever you have to do. Don't leave it for the end. It does not help. And it does not help with classroom management either. And also it does not help with parents. Oh, Dimitra said there was a power cut. Okay, Dimitra, don't worry, I'm recording it anyway. Um, so um, there is a, a problem with, uh, with this solves the problem with parents as well. Because for example, if parents see their children, you know, getting out of the classroom, all sweaty, uh, uh, you know, in a rush, they will think, hmm, here, these people play all the time, and where's a real lesson? I mean, we know that even playing is part of a real lesson, but they don't. So for marketing purposes, for the end of the lesson, keep something that calms them down, like storytelling, mm -hmm. which is an, an, another, another, another webinar, another workshop, another concept, but keep for the end something calm. This also helps them emotionally to, uh, you know, take in all the information from the lesson and leave the classroom in calmness, in peace, and uh, still cheerful. So we don't leave, for example, grammar for the end of the lesson because they're going to leave like this, totally <laughs> bored, and with a gray cloud above their heads. So um, let's go on. You can see my screen now, right? Yes. Yes. Now, uh, some theory on games. Games are very useful for language learning. They're, they're useful for anything, but they're very useful for language learning in particular. Um, it, they break the routine. Uh, learners love routines, but they also love when we break the routines. They're, of course, motivating. Um, they help us motivate our students to sustain their effort for learning. Uh, they provide language practice for all skills and systems, so they're very holistic. Uh, students can interact and communicate when we create a game situation. For example, if you just tell them, okay, I want you two to talk about what you did yesterday. They might have zero ideas, but if you gamify it somehow, or if you create a, a creative activity out of it, they will, they will participate uh, more willingly. Um, and of course, they, they create a meaningful context. Now, we are language teachers or language educators, and a game cannot just be fun. It has to be more than fun. Um, it should involve some friendly competition, of course, but it should integrate all learners it should include all learners learners should a game should be used for inclusiveness purposes even the weak ones need to be able to participate in the games and they can't be the losers all the time um it should encourage them to use the language uh and they cannot be just games so if it's just okay now let's play 
start running around the classroom and tap on each other's back. That's not a language game. We need to have in mind that every activity we, we do in class or we assign for homework, playful or not, should have a language focus. Okay, otherwise, it must be pedotopy, then it must be language schools. Okay, now, uh, before you choose a game, you need to be able to answer these questions. What kind of language does my game have? Maybe sometimes, practice, cannot... um, uh, recognition, which is fine as well. But we need, before choosing a game, we need to, to, to make some critical decisions about it and some critical thinking. Why am I using it? What's the purpose? Um, does it fit my students and their needs? Do, do I need to simplify it or make it more complex? Does it offer enough interaction or if not interaction, participation? Do I like the game? Because if you ask me to play Fortnite, it's a great and very motivating game for students, but I hate it. So I wouldn't use it. Okay, so I, I would not use any games with, for example, violence or ge gender stereotypes. So make sure whatever you choose is something you like as well, because students know when we like something. Um, now, and another thing we need to think as teachers is how creative we are. Uh, anyway, do, I, do we do creative things in our lessons? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one of my favorite creative activities is called Shoebox Autobiography. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to, I'll give you the instructions and you will do it with your group again. Uh, I'll tell you how we assign it to students and how you will do it right now. You, and you can do it online as well. You can give it to them for homework for the next lesson. You ask them to find a box or um, a bag and they have to put inside it three objects. One that shows something about who they were in the past. One that shows something about who they are right now. And one who shows something about who they want to be in the future. Okay, so three things, who you were, who you are, who you want to be. And they have to bring three objects. They can be pictures, they can be objects, they can be drawings, they can be, you know, whatever, ever, ever they want. And one by one, they present it. In a real class situation, they stand up in front of everybody with their box and they present their three objects. In, in, a, in a virtual situation, you have, uh, you mute all the students and you unmute the one presenting so that there is no background noise. Um, and what I'm going to ask you to do not right now, I'm gonna put you in rooms again. Uh, I will give you one minute of preparation. So you have to search a little bit of scavenger hunt, search around your house to find three things you want your, uh, that you show who you were, who you are and who you want to be. Uh, so you have one minute to look for what you're going to present and then I'll put you in rooms to present it to your uh, partners. One minute, go. Start searching. Oh, wow. Three objects. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Come back to your, come back, come back. Your time is up. Oh. You come back to your seats. 
okay? Uh, Vaso, Amy, Kelly, Georgia, Lydia, myself, do you have your objects? Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to put you in breakout rooms again. Okay. Ah, uh, Vili was... Okay, so uh, now I'm going to put you in breakout rooms and I'm going to give you five minutes for each room to present your shoebox autobiographies. Okay. Okay. So make it fast. Normally you can take more time, but for the purposes of the webinar, let's make it fast. You're going to be in the same rooms as before. But Irini, I'm going to give, I'm going to move you to another room because you. Go. Where am I? <laughs> okay. You have to join your room. Billy, I'm, uh, I have to put you in another room because for some reason you're on your own there. Okay, you're fine. You should all be in your rooms now and you start. Okay, let's wait for everybody to be back. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. yes. Good. Good. Okay. So let's see who's not back. Okay, I think uh, everybody's back. Good. Um, so you see how through this activity you can actually do a lot of a lot of a lot of work uh, in in grammar, in vocabulary, in in anything because it's also meaningful. It connects the class and it's a great activity to use for online teaching as well because it's human. And one of the things our students miss. Uh, these days is human contact. Mm. I tried breakout rooms yesterday for the first time with my little ones, my A senior and their Tritakia, Triti Dimotiku, most of them. Oh. And they loved it. I had them in pairs. Um, I thought it was going to be difficult. Of course, they will speak half of the time in Greek, but it's okay uh, because they need uh, this human contact. And from next time on, I'm going to start matchmaking them as well. So, you know, so who I think likes whom are going to be together so they can start flirting too, because they <laughs> as well. Okay. Um, another similar activity. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. It's called the glurp. Uh, 
Again, you can assign it for homework or, or do it instantly on the spot with higher level students. You can use it with any language level and any age, but it changes the, the output you will get on the part of your students. Uh, GLURP is an imaginary wor word. It does not exist. It's an acronym. And you ask them to think of one thing, just one, mm -hmm. that is their GLURP. And what does this mean? It means something they are good at, G, something they love. So it has to be the one thing they're good at and they love that is unusual. And here where, here's where the U goes, that they're responsible for, the R, and that they're proud of. Hmm? So, so it has at, to be one thing. Unusual, okay. responsible for, and proud. And they have, again, to present it. Uh, again, if you decide to do it online, you, when students present, it's good to mute everybody else because you know, they, they don't want any silly comments and they, they need to be focused on everything. Uh, so one by one, you unmute them and you have them present their glurps. So I'll give you examples of glurps my students have presented. Um, one boy brought his sister and he mm -hmm. said, she's my glurp. Uh, no. And think about it, like at home, they can present their pets, they can present their toys, they can present no. family members, they can present parents, they can present whatever they want, because at home, you, you've got everything. So one of the good things of the lockdown is that you have all the resources you cannot bring at school as a student, you have them uh, accessible now. So, uh, so a boy presented his sister, he said, I'm a good brother, I love her, it's unusual for siblings not to fight, I'm responsible for her when my parents are away, and I'm proud of her because she's this, na 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 na. Uh, uh, one of my students in the past, a university student, said that her blurb was her buddy, because she was very fit, and she said, I have a very good body, I love it and I take care of it, it is unusual for people to be so fit and sexy, na na na. I'm responsible for it because I, you know, I, I, I eat well and I'm proud of it. And she was showing us her pictures in bikini, which was kind of funny, but again, <laughs> uh, language wise, it was meaningful communication and we understood a lot of things about this girl from that day on. Um, so use it with online classes. Another one you can assign for homework uh, for <laughs> online classes, but you can do it with your students in class when we go back to normality, uh, is the t-shirt bio. You either ask them, you, uh, you ask them for an A3 paper, hmm, or you give them an A3 paper, and they have to draw on it a t-shirt, like this one. And depending on the language level, you ask them to, to write different things on their t-shirt. Uh, so for example, I will draw one on my mini whiteboard here. And I will show you what I mean. Can you see my mini whiteboard? Yes. 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 Okay. So, uh, for example, here I will draw a heart in the middle of my of my T-shirt, and you ask them to write the names of two mentors because since we're teachers and you're teachers, I I I want you to think of your mentors. Okay. So I'll write. Two professors I had. Okay. Um, and then, for example, you can ask them to write on the one sleeve one thing they're good at. So I'm good at learning new stuff. And on the other sleeve, they can write something they're not so good at. So, for example, I'm not good at housework. Although I'm, I'm, I'm trying these days, I'm trying really hard to get better. Uh, and then you can ask, you can ask them to write uh, like here, uh, an adjective that describes them. So for example, I think I'm friendly. And I mean, you can ask them to write anything you want, basically. If they're younger, they can write things like their favorite colors, their favorite animals, their favorite mm -hmm. ice cream flavor, mm -hmm. uh, the, the members of their family, how old they are. So it depends on their um, age, on their level and, and age, what things you're going to ask them to write. And then, of course, uh, you can ask them to paint it in different colors, 
you know, and, and draw and make things and decorate it. And this is what they will do for homework. And when you teach, you can present your own. And then you have two options. You can ask them to send it to you, to take a photo of it and send it to you. Or even better, you can ask them to present it when you meet for the synchronous part of your learning. And again, it makes online teaching more meaningful, more human, more fun, and more active. Because uh, I don't know if you read my article, one of the things we do not want through online teaching is to make our learners passive consumers of screen time. Mm -hmm. So it is important to create activities that are more active. Activities, active. Okay, so, and this is their t-shirt bio. If they create it at school in real life, not in virtual life, you can cut them and have a nice laundry on one of your classroom walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, another one that you can use, and it's good both for online and, uh, and real life, is the CSI. It's not the TV series, the famous series. Uh, CSI is another acronym, and it stands for color, symbol, and image. You can give them any concept, love, education, school, uh, whatever you want. And you can ask them to think of a color that this concept uh, brings to mind, a symbol, and an image. Uh, this, again, can, can be assigned for homework. So I give you the word school. Find a color that brings school to mind. Find a symbol that uh, school brings to mind and an image hmm, from Google, whatever. And if they're older, like from A2 and above, they can even write something and justify it or present it orally. And then, especially for B1 and above, you can ask them to create a campaign. So you tell them you work for an advertising company hmm. and I want you to create a logo for this new school in our area mm. and present it to, to us. And you know, you, you pitch and then I will choose the best logo um, to, and, and this will be the advertising company I will work with. Okay, and this, I mean, other than being creative and also helps with symbolic thinking, it's a real life skill. This is something they will have to do later in life. And plus they like it. In fact, we did it a couple of years ago in our school, no, three years ago, and we designed, a, we, we had a big logo design contest and they absolutely loved it. And then we even uh, asked some advertisers and graphic designers to vote for the 20 best logos. And then we printed them on t-shirts, on real t-shirts. And when we had the, our end of year event, they, all teachers were wearing t-shirts with the students' logo. So it was good commercial as well, good publicity, good marketing. Now, Another one, um, I know that some of you who have attended other seminars of mine know this activity where you find an adjective that starts with the same name uh, letter as your name. For example, I am Magical Maria. Uh, we have, for example, Gorgeous Georgia and Excellent Amy and Vibrant Vaso and Mysterious Mighty Sophie and let's see who else. Um, uh, dynamic Dimitra and energetic Irini and uh, vivid Vili and kind Kelly and uh, go gorgeous. I said the other Georgia can be great Georgia, loving Lydia and whatever. So you you find words. Divine Despina. Yes, thank you very much, Despina. Uh, so each one of your students chooses their own adjective and you can start or end your lesson with each one of them saying uh, their name with their adjective um, and then try to have everyone remember each other's adjective plus name and it's a nice way of either closing your lesson because it's all positive of course you do not accept adjectives like silly sylvia or you know like ugly urania for example we don't say things like that it has to be positive um and then with you can extend it and ask them for next time i want you to find a verb and a noun so make a sentence subject verb object adjective 
uh, noun, verb, uh, noun. It might be a crazy sentence. So magical Maria makes marmalade. Kind Kelly kills, uh, what do you kill Kelly? Cool, cool kites. Kind <laughs> Kelly kills kites. It can be totally crazy, it doesn't matter. Uh, if, I mean, if you, if, you, if you want, the crazier the better. And then you can have, you can put them in a nice wall, uh, on, a, on, a, on a paper on the wall of your real classroom, or you can create a, a Word document with all their, their sentences, and it's like the crazy poem for your class. Mm -hmm. So, uh, divine Despina uh, despises dinosaurs. <laughs> um, I don't know, uh, gorgeous Georgia, um, glows, we don't have an, an object for that, but think what it does uh, with vocabulary <laughs> practice and also syntax, because you, you have to choose uh, transitive, non-transitive verbs. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's good language practice as well. Uh, okay. Now, the next one, I played this online with my AB Junior. Uh, on Monday, you ask them to think of a ma of a fairy tale, a well-known fairy tale, a fairy tale that everybody knows, and freeze in a pose that will make the others able to guess who the character is. So, for example, uh, let me show you the one I did. Dumbo. Who am I? Dumbo. Dumbo. Dumbo, okay. Okay. Huh? Um, somebody wrote something, maybe you found it. Okay. Yes, Dumbo, exactly. Uh, or we can have... Um, am I? Again. The Red Riding Hood. Yeah. Think of Amy. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Mm, Very good. Okay. So, uh, and again, a nice way to end your lesson online because it's uh, it's relaxing. It's nonverbal, but it's connected with language. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one, which is called the room, I have only done it in real life, but we can try it online. It's not impossible. Okay. But they have to, to do it on their own. So I'm going to ask you to do it right now. You have to start. I'll give you the instructions and then you stand up. I want you to move around your room three times. Okay, three times. And as you move around, you say aloud any words that come to your mind from the things you see around you. So you don't stop talking. Logo diaria. You say okay. things all the time. Whatever you see around you, you say it. Okay, so I'll tell you where this comes from in a minute, but first I want you to do it. Stand up. Stand up, everybody, stand up. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so wherever you are, you move three times around the room and you don't stop talking and you say it out loud. Okay, if other people at home think you're crazy, it's okay. <laughs> so one, two, three, go, start moving. Okay. Talk all the time. Don't stop talking. Okay, good. Thank you, Thank you, Dimitra. Let's see, let's wait for the others. Paso is back. Lily's back. Kelly's back. I cannot see some of you, but I'm assuming you're back as well. Okay, so I think almost everybody's back. Amy's back, Irene's back. Okay, what happens with this exercise? It, it was found in research that if you do that before any vocabulary task, 
applies. Your vocabulary retention is activated and you can retrieve more words. So when I do it in class, for example, if we have an exam or if we have, let's say, uh, a mock test, you can spend three minutes with your students before the test doing this activity in real life. Uh, it also helps. This, this did not start with uh, testing. It started... People are talking about irrelevant things. Yes, I'm muting you. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, so one of the, the this was created um, as a, as a creative writing activity initially because it activates the subconscious to start producing uh, words. But then this this uh, was transferred to language assessment um, uh, research, and it was found that if you do that before any vocabulary task, your subconscious retrieves words it knows, but it doesn't know it knows. So it helps you activate your subconscious knowledge of words. And it's also nice fun. Also, uh, when we teach uh, synchronously, like we just did, it's good to ask your students to do some kinesthetic things, like move around, go there, do that. Because as we said before, it's time for action, act. Hmm? The next one is called your topia. Um, your topia is one of my favorite activities and it can even last for a whole month if you wish. Uh, each one of you is a place. Each one of us is a place. Let's say a country. Um, and the first thing you have to do is find the name of your country. So is it Irinitopia, Amytopia, Georgiatopia, Vilitopia, Mariatopia? And then gradually you need to start um, finding finding information about your country. You can write a, a, a Wikipedia entry for your Irinitopia. Um, you can talk about the geography of your play, of your country, the population. Is it a densely populated, populated country like I would be because I like being around lots of people? Or are you a lonelier type of person? So it's a country like Canada or Australia. Uh, what is the regime? Is it a monarchy because you're bossy? Is it an anarchy because you're messy? Uh, what is the currency? Do people use money and what kind of money? Draw the flag. Create the national anthem of your country, which is yourself. Um, what is the history of your country, which is in reality is your personal history? What are some of the laws of your country, which in reality are your personal no-nos? You know, what you accept, what you don't accept as a person. What are the customs of your country? So this can take, as a project-based learning um, idea, it can take a month. And at the end of the month, you can have students actually present their topias. Uh, and they can be, they can present them on PowerPoint. They can create, you know, posters. They can create 3D models, um, arts and crafts about their country. Um, and it's great because everybody likes to talk about themselves. And it's also a good tool for soul searching uh, because you start understanding who you really are or who you want to be. But it's also amazing language practice because of all the things you have to look for and talk about, uh, thinking that you're talking about a place, but in reality, talking about yourself in a symbolic way. So I have used this um, uh, also uh, in the summer school uh, I was directing and it, 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 it works miracles, really, it's amazing. Uh, now, if you want to do it online, you, you will take it step by step. So you say, for example, for the next month, what our project is going to be your topia. First thing I want you to do is write a Wikipedia fact uh, sheet for your country. And gradually you start assigning things. Next time, draw a flag for your country. Uh, for next week, I want you to write for laws of your country and you gradually build it hmm? now uh, one of, of the most creative tasks you can assign to your students and do in class or outside of class is of course poems uh, and there are different kinds of poems you can assign this is the acrostic one so you have their names and they write anything about themselves i'm not we're not going to do this uh, I'll show you examples, but you'll have the presentation and the link so you can, you can have a look at them. 
like this is my acrostic poems. Of course, depending on the level of the student, it will be more complicated or less complicated. If they're little ones, they can write just colors and things they like and very, very simple acrostic poems. If, if they're uh, higher level students, they can do something like what I did here. Mr. Lover and Solver are passionate, reading books all the time, interested in people's stories, anti-racist, anti-fascist, anti-violence. So this is my acrostic poem, Maria. Then you can make it even more complicated for uh, higher level students uh, where you have 10 different lines and here you have instructions on what they can write uh, for each line and an example for myself. This can work with B1 plus and above. Uh, even more complicated, three stanzas here and an example. If you want to have them write stories, one way to do it is start with the five W's poems where each line is one of the WH questions, who, what, when, where, why. Mm. So they start with it as a pre-writing exercise and then they develop it into a story. So Lisa went on a road trip to Minnesota over the 4th of July to watch her friend get married. And this can then be, be elaborate, elaborated into uh, a story. This is the, the template, okay, you can use to write your own, who, what, where, when, why, before actually writing their stories. And they can be very simple, as I said, or more complicated. Then we have this one, you know, where you, you each line is an extra word, one word, two words, three words, four words, and then the, the last one is again one word. This is for lower levels and it's, it's easy and fun. Look at this one, my school, a warm and welcoming space, cheerfully, joyfully, creatively, teaching, learning, being, becoming, a space of love. Uh, now, I obviously miss <laughs> uh, going back to my school. And now we're gonna play hot seat. So I will ask Irini to close her eyes. Okay, and Georgia will describe this word for Irini and we'll see if Irini finds it. So I, I can't hear you. So uh, Amy, you'll be my ears. If Irini finds it, you do this. Okay, so Georgia, describe this word for Irini. Me, uh, okay. Um, oh, I have to unmute you. Uh, it, it is the color of the... Unmute you. Okay. I have okay. A you, so start. It is a color of a, of a fruit called plum. Purple. Yes. Good. Well, now, Irini, keep your eyes closed. Vaso, describe <laughs> this word to Irini. Okay. Uh, when Irini wants to make a cake, you take a bowl. You put in it some flour, milk, eggs, and then you need to tell me if she finds all it. this together. And then, sorry, uh, you take the bowl, you put some flour, some eggs, some sugar, and after that, you need to mm, all this together. Mix them. Okay, in your yes. time is up. Ah, she found it. Okay, now I will have Vasa to close her eyes. Okay. And Marisofi will uh, uh, describe the next word. <clears throat> Amy, you're again so, my ears. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. So when you want someone to do something, first of all, you have to... Ask them. No. Uh, no, Vasa, you lost, you lost, you lost. Okay, open your eyes, Vaso. The word was convinced. Oh, okay. And then Kelly, you close your eyes. Vili, you describe the next word. Okay. Um, it is a kind, uh, maybe, of kind of gesture, we could say, or uh, we do this to go <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> um, I can't hear her. I can't hear Kelly, her. Kelly, you lost. <laughs> Open your eyes. The word was movement. Okay. okay. So see how you can play this with your students online as well. And you can check dictation, for example, or any vocabulary you assigned this way in a more gamified way. Uh, 
Then we have dancing dictation. And I will show you, I mean, this is you play a song and then you stop it. Uh, and when you stop the song, students have to freeze. Mm. Okay. The ones who do not freeze are checked on uh, one of the words you had to assign, you had assigned, and they have to say the meaning of the word or an example of the word or spell the word or whatever. And if they do it correctly, they get a second chance. So I will show you an example of that that we did yesterday. Uh, it really made my day. So let me find it. Okay. Some of you might have seen it because we work together, but for the others, um, like it totally changed my mood yesterday when we did this dancing dictation thing. And I will do it for every lesson all the time now. So now I'll share my screen to show you. Okay. Can you see a video? Yes. Yes. Okay. So they had to freeze, and then the one who would not freeze, but they would, uh, would keep moving, uh, was asked. Uh, for a word from the, the vocabulary they had to do. And it was great fun and they mm -hmm. moved around and they were smiling and they were happy and it was great. Um, so let's go back to this screen now. Um, so it's a, it's a more fun way to check dictation in real life and online as well. Uh, then Felix the cat, I'm going to put you in rooms again. And what you have to do with, with your group, find as many adjectives as possible for Felix. So you take the alphabet and for each letter you find one adjective. Felix the cat is an awesome cat and that is for A. And I want you to find as many as you can. Um, for I mean, you find one for each letter. So I'm going to time you. I'm going to put you in rooms and time you. And the group that finds more wins. So Felix the cat is an awesome cat, a b something cat, a k something cat, and so on. And you have one minute to find as many uh, adjectives as possible for Felix. Go to your rooms. Okay. <clears throat> One minute.
think we could continue. If, yeah. Okay, maybe we, we have one more minute. Okay. We, uh, we can continue from here until the other one. Yeah, no back. problem, not a problem. Uh, oh. Okay, so we're mysterious. Uh, naughty. Naughty. Yes. Optimistic. Uh, we have to wait for some more people, I think. Um, polite. Seems. Polite, yeah. Quiet. Quiet. <laughs> Q R R R R R. Rowdy. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I think um, everybody's back. Uh, now, I want you to send me in the chat room, because I, your teachers and I trust you, how many adjectives you found. <sighs> Um, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So I'm waiting for your answers. How many adjectives you found for Felix? Twenty. Oh my God. Ooh, nineteen. I think we've got a winner already. Uh, the Espinas group uh, is the winner. Well done. They found 20 adjectives. Don't expect your students to find that many, of course, but even if they found, find five or six, it's, it's, it's good. Uh, now, this is something I wanna try today. Uh, so I, I do it in my class, but um, I'm gonna do it online as well. So it's spot the difference. Uh, somebody wrote something, let me check, sorry. I know, Kusandina, I saw it. Don't worry about it. Um, now, spot the difference. Okay, I want us all to watch uh, very well Irini. Have a good look at Irini. Vili. Have a good look at Vili. And Georgia. Have a good look at Georgia. Look at them really, really well. Irini, Irini, raise your hand so that everybody knows who you are. Vili, Georgia. Now, Irini, Vili, and Georgia, I want you to switch off your cameras for a while, just for a while, and change something on you. Your hair, like change something. And when you come back, we need to spot the difference. Okay. Like change your hair, change your glasses, wear a scarf. Mm. And then the rest of us have to find the difference. Let's see what we find when they're back. Mm. Where are they? Come on, hurry. We don't want that many changes, something simple. Okay. <laughs> okay, Amy, what can you see different in Vili? <laughs> you okay. have to unmute yourself. Uh, Marisol, <laughs> can you see any differences in Irini? Amy, we didn't hear you before because everyone's muted. So I was saying that Vili's hair is down now. Okay. So she and Costandina, what can you see different in Georgia? <laughs> Costandina, we can't hear I don't know you. what you're saying, but I'm assuming you have found some differences. Uh, now I'm muting you again. Yes, sorry. And I go on to the next exercise and you can do it with more students. Like you can take a picture, a, a screenshot of how they look and then present and then, uh, you know, show it to them for a while and then ask them to change and come back. It doesn't work if you have too many students. Now, personality quizzes. Oh, my favorite and 
they really work and students love them and at some point they will ask you to do them every time and you run out of ideas so i'm going to ask you to do this personality quiz that is great for adults basically and i will draw something on my mini board here ah i can actually draw something no I'll draw something on the virtual board sorry i forgot i have this tool okay so i want you to imagine that this is a river can you see my river okay and it's a very rough river nobody can cross it swimming because you get drowned okay and on this bank on this side of the river we have no one, two. we have a girl whose name is lucy and lucy is in love with Mark. And she wants to go and meet him because she really, really misses him. But it's impossible to swim the river, of course, as we said, so she needs to find someone who has a boat. And here is Billy. Billy has a boat. Uh, in fact, that's his job. So Lucy goes to Billy and she says, Billy, could you please take me next time you cross the, the river? Because I really need to see Mark. I, I miss him so, so much. And Billy says, yeah, sure, Lucy, give me 1,000 euro. But Billy, you know I have no money. I'm totally broke. I cannot give you even one euro. Well, I'm sorry, Lucy. It's 1,000 euro or nothing. So now Lucy's very, very sad. She doesn't know what to do. She misses Mark so much, but she remembers there is an other owner of a boat, Sam. So she goes to Sam and she says, oh, Sam, hi, I, I miss my boyfriend so much and I need to cross the river. You have a boat. Can you take me across next time you, 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 you take the ride? And Sam says, yes, sure. It's 1,000 euro. Same story, Lucy says, oh, I have no money. You know it, I'm, I'm broke. Please take me. And Sam says, eh, if you don't have the money, Lucy, there's always another way. And Lucy says, no, no, what are you talking about? I can't do that. I'm in love with Mark. Well, it's or 1,000 euro or stay here. So Lucy's desperate. She has sex with Sam. She crosses the river. But Colin, who's here, has seen what happened between Lucy and Sam. And before Lucy reaches this bank, he tells Mark and Mark leaves. And when Lucy arrives, she's alone and desperate. And here's Henry. And Henry um, sees the girl, sees Lucy who's crying and she's desperate and she's heartbroken. And he tells her, come on, come with me and let's get a cup of tea and talk about it. So now what I want you to do is write the initials, just the initials of these people. So B-L-S-C-M-H, just the initials in the order you like them, from the one you like the most to the one you like the least. Okay, just put them in order vertically. And when you're done, do this, please, so that I know that you've finished. You have to include everybody, by the way. Could you repeat uh, what Henry said? He can't hear you, so you might ask her on the chat. Yeah. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. Uh, no, 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 just, it's for you, uh, Vili. You don't have to write them here. The, it's just for you. Okay, so is everybody ready writing the initials? I wanna see thumbs up. Okay, so now let's see who you are, people. Okay, so, 
I don't know where you have B, but B bill is business. So depending on how high or low you have it shows how you feel about business in your lives. And Lucy, of course, represents the value of love. So if you have it high, you value love a lot. And S is, of course, sex. Not the, the, only the positive side of sex, of course, but e each of these values has both a positive and a negative side. Colin is communication. And you can see again how communication is important because he wanted to inform um, Mark, but com communication can also mean fake news or gossip or miscommunication because Colin did not have all the facts. And Mark is morality. Sorry, I write like a kindergarten <laughs> child. And Henry is humanity. So after I did it, I did this with my B2 class, uh, and you cannot do it with very young ones, of course, because you have sex involved. Um, you ask them to write the reasoning. Why do you have, for example, Mark at a high um, place, and I don't know, like Sam at a low one, whatever you have, whatever your combination. So it's like their personal analysis of the personality test. Another thing you can do is you can pair them. I'm not sure this can work online though, but you, it can work in real life. You can pair them and the one can be the, psych, the psychologist and the other one can be the patient and the psychologist can analyze and the patient can um, ask questions and then they change roles. Okay, so, um, and another one, is this was the river story and there's another one which is uh we can do now but i won't hear you you just write so i'll give you words and you write one adjective for each word you hear but instantly like you don't take time to think okay are you ready so your first word is dog write an adjective for the word dog The second word, and I want you again to write very quickly, is cat. <laughs> very interesting answers. The third word is the word Mouse. Okay, good answers. Ooh, from Dimitra, we have something different. Interesting, Dimitra. Uh, next word is the word a cup of chocolate. It's not a word, it's a phrase. A cup of chocolate. Or if you don't drink chocolate, coffee. One of the two. A cup of chocolate or coffee. Oh. <laughs> Costadina, I love you. <laughs> Irini, you too. And finally, the last word is the ocean. Okay, uh, if you're done, I can give you the answers. The first adjective uh, shows what you think of yourselves. The dog. The adjective you wrote about the cat 
shows what you think about your partner or if you don't have a partner about, <laughs> uh, you know, the ex-partners, whatever. Okay. The adjective you wrote about the mouse uh, is how you see your enemies. So I thought meaningful was interesting. <coughs> Now, what you wrote for a cup of chocolate or coffee really means how you see sex. Uh, but when you do it with students, you tell them about love. <coughs> so necessary, addictive, essential, delicious, good stuff, girls. And what you wrote about the ocean is how you see life. And then of course, when you do it with your students, you have to either um, elaborate it uh, either through a writing activity again, so write what you, if, how you, you know, a, a short paragraph about each one of these or a speaking activity, present who you are and how you see different things in your life and so on. Now, finally, I want to show you some um, online tools that you can use these days. Uh, this is WordWall. And I will, I have it open here. I found it a couple of days ago and I absolutely loved it. Mm, it's here. Um, can you see on your screen some activities? Yes, okay, uh -huh. good. So uh, you subscribe to this uh, word wall thing and You can create all kinds of activities and games for your students with different templates. So you go here where it says create activity and you have all these different templates to choose from. Uh, and some of them are better for asynchronous tasks like the walk a mole, which is a, I, I created a past simple uh, game for them to do in their own time. And some of them are better to do uh, when you teach synchronously, li like the random wheel, and I will show you examples of this. So uh, this is the one at Walk the Mall, the one I, I created for them to do on their own as a revision activity, because they had to study uh, verbs in the past. And hit the words that are verbs in past simple, okay. So now it gets more difficult. Look. And if I make a mistake, this is what happens. So I gave it to them for homework. They loved it. Instead of telling them, you know, study the verbs in past simple, you give them this and they have fun doing it. But you can also do it synchronously. So for, for this class again, Uh, towards the end of the lesson, I said, okay, uh, no, it was right before we did grammar exercise in the book. Now, uh, for example, Irini, I'll spin the wheel for you and whatever verb comes, you have to give me the past simple. And one by one would give their answers and they loved it. So instead of giving them, you know, uh, an impersonal exercise, uh, you can give them uh, activities here it's there, there's no limit to what you can do another one i you can use is esl uh games world where you can find <coughs> so many ready-made games um f and powerpoint games uh on different areas so you get you just go to search you search for whatever you want so let's say pass simple again for example and it will give you different things you can assign to your students. So many resources, it's endless. And the one I recently, like I think yesterday, uh, who was it, Andriani or Amy, who posted it in our teachers group, is this one, Tiny Tap, which I will present in detail on our 
Young Learners webinar because it's mainly for young learners. But again, you can create your own games and activities or you can find ready-made ones uh, on different CLIL subjects for, for young learners. And again, you have so many things to work with. Um, and they're fun and you can, uh, you can revise things and everything. Um, so try that as well. I will present it in detail on, for the ones of you who will be there on uh, next Monday, I think, is it? Yes. Uh, are, they, are there any more webinars com coming up? Yes, we have uh, the Teaching Young Learners on Monday and then exam prep, um, I think on April 15th. Um, and... Now, finally, the last thing I want to show you is like, the thing is, the pro I mean, one of the problems is, uh, <laughs> we have so many uh, resources that we don't know what to do with them. One of them is brain teasers. And one of our teachers posted it and I found it really great. Uh, but and it was found online, you know, like, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Okay. Uh, you can find things like that like on Twinkle, but also if you just Google them, ready-made activities that are gamified, that are fun, um, that are interesting. Uh, the problem is how much time we have and how tired we are, because really it's so exhausting to teach online. Um, but, I mean, this is what we have to do now and we have to do it well. Um, so let's do it well. And on a final note, uh, my, my suggestion is let's play online, not online. Let's play with our students as much as possible, especially now it, it, they need it more than before. Um, if this was our normal uh, session, I would like, I would ask you to give me two stars and a wish, um, but you cannot do this anonymously now. So I'm going to create a poll for, for, for you to give me some feedback. Um, and you will see it on your screen in a minute. You'll see a question. I cannot see who answers what. So you can write whatever you want. You'll see the question in a minute. Again, uh, I cannot see who answers what. So, I will start the poll now and you can write your answers. I will only see percentages. Normally you see a question now on your screens. Thank you very much. Everybody said a lot. Thank you. So Thank yes, you. I will send you the, the recorded webinar to all of you in about 15 minutes because I have to upload it on YouTube first and then send you the link so that it's not too heavy. Yes, we had already a workshop on pronunciation. I will repeat it. I mean, uh, I, I will repeat as many as possible and I will try to reduce the cost as well. We have now the teaching online uh, on Monday for young learners and the exam prep on the 15th. I will keep you informed. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, sorry for the sound thing. I'm not a tech expert, but I'm trying. Um, and you'll get it in a minute. Okay. In about a quarter, you will have everything. Thank you so much. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Bye.
Thank you very much. Goodbye.